Hello and welcome everybody. I want to have a discussion about club face technology. So we have here a Golf Tech USA honeycomb driver here. So you can see the honeycomb pattern here. You can see Golf Tech USA. You can see the four screw sole plate. There's this little Tony Pena style screw right here. And it's obviously a driver, one indicating one wood. Interesting shape here on the sole. And they put in this honeycomb pattern inside of this plastic face here. Can you see that pretty clearly? It's just a honeycomb face. What are they trying to accomplish with that? Show technology. I had some Reebok Instapump shoes where they're, you know, competing with Nike Air. And so they put in this uh, hex air like pattern on their shoe. It was like, okay, that's cool, I guess. And and on it was like honeycomb is one of the strongest you know structures ever that's why bees use it it's like the perfect whatever all right cool whatever so in the 90s that people went crazy with this like technology it's natural look at us okay because it looks different it must be different which means it must be better okay so very visible you can see just real quick it's a laminate wood with is that metal in there or i'm not i'm not sure it just looks like they just took a sheet of like aluminum and just slapped it in there with the hex pattern in it and they're saying it's technology right it reminds me of like the i play a lot of pickleball and lots of pickleball places also have like this certain pattern anyway so laminate wood you can see plastic with that little hex insert whipping i don't know anything about golf tech by the way if you know a lot about the history of this particular club let us know in the comments below i just don't know i haven't even hit this club yet and it has a step shaft with a honeycomb label on it. And look at this, it's honeycomb grip. It even says honeycomb right here, honeycomb grip. All right, cool. So let's talk about Callaway. All right, Callaway with their precious AI design. Now, here's kind of my thinking. Every time I see the Callaway AI marketing, to me, it just seems like a gag. It's a gimmick, all right? People say, well, AI is so smart. Let, let's analyze that real quick. The AI, artificial intelligence, okay, I question whether it's really an artificial intelligence or if it's just modeling and they just write algorithms to solve problems. The engineers now are programming maybe now instead of like using, winding up that, what was that ping man like uh, robot that they would always use at ping where they would actually develop prototypes and actually, I don't know, test their clubs. Now it's all just modeled on computers. But I'm guessing that they're, inputting these huge data sets into this model and they're saying come up with the best solution for this data set very specific all right and that's the only way that that robot the robot the ai the computer the algorithm would say oh we're going to make it wavy because there are certain places where people are more likely to miss hit it and so what we're going to make those out of your data set we're going to make those little spots a little bit hotter just up to the max, they can't exceed the max, and everywhere else a little bit slower. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a few hot spots on the face where the computer thinks that's your, where you're most likely going to hit it because of the data set given to it, and then make those the hottest possible, and then the rest of it is just gonna dumb down because, hey, who cares? And that's what I see with that wavy pattern. I'm like, why is it wavy? It, if a human being looked at that, they would take a, test, take a step back and say, oh, See the scatter pattern here? That tells me that they could hit the face anywhere here, not very specifically here or here or here or here. It's just anywhere along that line, right? So this whole area, if we made that whole area, the max, you know, push the USGA RNA limits, that whole area, which other companies do, by the way, then that would be more forgiving and give more people speed. But instead this AI, this AI as they call it, is like looking very specifically, oh, look at the data set. Look at all these data we have. We know that this is the most likely place for them to hit and then here and then here and then here. And you're just like, dude, computer, settle down. Why don't you take the big picture and that whole area, make that whole area really as springy as legally you can, right? As, as Give as much power and potential there as possible and forgiving as possible. And that's not what they told it to do. So now all of a sudden it's a gimmick. To me, when I see those wavy AI developed faces, oh, we input so much data into it. It's like, yeah, well, so if you're half a centimeter off, you're telling me 
of one of those places where it thinks you're going to hit it, then tough luck. Tough beans, you just lost two yards, whatever it is. And that's the other complaint I have about them is they're regulated by the golf agencies, the USGA, the RNA. They cannot be any hotter than any other golf club out there. So what difference does it make? And I can tell you the difference. It's cheaper. What? Yeah, no, you heard me. It's cheaper. It's like all these kids who are getting in trouble. You know, these kids who, remember the kids who'd get in trouble for like using, uh, what was it? Ask, I forgot what it was. The, the AI that where they can just like ask things. They have, they just go online and they're just having this computer write them reports. Write me a report about the Revolutionary War. And then the computer will write the report and they submit that. Okay. Those kids that were in high school that were getting in trouble for that, now they're working as engineers and they, they're doing the same thing. They're like, oh, well, why would I engineer it when I can just have a computer? Hey, computer, uh, I know we're paying this organization. I know lots of companies uh, allow people to use their AI, Watson, you know, with IBM, various like Google, whoever it is, you know, and so they're just like, hey, computer, will you engineer this for me? The exact same thing that they were doing in high school with their reports, right? And they're just like, oh, see, look, it did a great job. I just put on all this data and all these data and it looks, there you go. We have a new wavy face driver. Yay. We can market it as incomplete data sets. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, it's like, so when I see that, it's the same as this. I look at this, it's the same as a Callaway driver. I'm like, it's a, it's not gonna help. It's the... You can see my point. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Let me know in the comments below if I'm clear. But to me, that like AI face technology, engineers, engineers do the same thing, but they have the big picture in mind and they're not going to go, oh, well, we're going to create 17 different hot spots here. They're like, oh, we'll just make the whole face as hot as possible. Done. Because they see the big picture and they're not operating with the limitations of only having that data set. So if, you know, I just I'm just saying, if an AI is given the data sets, given all those data, and like right here where my finger is, right here, there's not a single person that has hit it in that exact spot, the computer will say, oh, I'm not worried about this spot, make it as thick as possible, who cares about the rebound on that? It doesn't need to be a hot, hot spot of the face right here, low toe. And it will focus on the rest of it and just leave that spot because the data didn't tell it to. But an engineer will say, well, there's that possibility on the 18th hole at the masters when you're you know whoever's driving with our driver might hit it right there and in that case we want it to be as hot as possible and get that extra two yards or one yard or whatever it is you know because I, like I said it's regulated so you, gimmick faces yes or no have you hit the new Callaways I've hit the new Callaways and guess what they feel like all the other drivers out there and they go to, for me with my weak sauce swing, they all go about the same distance. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, let's uh, change gears and talk about fantasy golf. The first thing we're gonna do is put up the winners here, okay? So that we have the weak winners and the, the season leaders, and you too can play fantasy golf. It's free, just get on the PGA website, create an account, join fantasy golf, find the Vintage Golfer League, join. I'll put a link in the description below. While you're doing that, let's talk football. So for those of you in the future, the Super Bowl was yesterday at the filming. I'm filming this on Monday. It goes out on Tuesday. The Super Bowl was yesterday. We watched it. It was fun. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't seen it or you have it on, you saved it to your DVR, whatever, on YouTube TV, whatever. I'm not going to spoil it or even talk about it in detail. Just it was fun and exciting. It was a good game. But green. So I live in Wisconsin. Okay, Green Bay Packers are the Wisconsin team. But it's funny because in the Milwaukee area, it's actually, I'm in more of the Waukesha area, but the, the, Mil the Milwaukee area, okay, it gets really complicated real quick with football because so many people are like, Green Bay Packers are the home team. And everybody's like, but the Bears play like an hour away. The Chicago Bears are closer. They're the home team. And so they throw stones at each other. You know, you, show, you rock up at work and then you know how it is like, Everybody wears like those uh, slippers with the uh, NFL teams. It's like 75% of them are wearing like Bears slippers and like 25% are wearing like Green Bay Packers slippers. Yeah, interesting. There's always that one guy with like Atlanta Falcons, yeah. 
I used to live in Atlanta. I love the Falcons. So anyway, I found this at a thrift store for, get this, a reasonable 30 bucks. What, $30? Yeah, I just bought it because I like supporting thrift stores. I, mean, I thought it was funny. It's just this terrible, terrible like epoxy with this little brass insert down here to weight it. It's just terrible plastic, you know, and then Green Bay pack. And then it's just this terrible heavy steel, what is that, a single bend shaft that's just spray painted yellow with a green, whatever this is. This is Golf Pride. Oh, that's kind of grimy. Golf Pride grip. All right, well, <laughs> it just cracks me up. Anyway, let me know your football allegiance. Do you even watch football? It's like this is a golf channel, not a football channel. So excited to read your comments about AI faces, about marketing, about, you know, what do you think of this new technology and what do you think of the Super Bowl? Let us have it in the comments below. As usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. It's just general support. It keeps this channel afloat. Thank you so much. If you want your name here within the credits, uh, join us on Patreon. Just a dollar a month. It doesn't have to be much. You can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. I have some golf accessories. I have poker chips. I have various other things on that storefront. So uh, be sure to visit that again in the description below. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe. Thank you everybody for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.